come across those headlines that make you stop and say, wait, what? Like the ones about the second most commonly prescribed medication for older adults being linked to bone loss? It's shocking, right? And since this medication affects so many people, I thought it was worth digging into what's really going on. In today's video, we'll talk about levothyroxine or Synthroid as you might know it, which is commonly prescribed for thyroid issues. While it can be a life-saving medication for some people, it's also tied to concerns about bone health, especially when it's overused or improperly managed. Today we'll discuss how levothyroxine works and why it's prescribed. We'll talk about the connection between thyroid health and bone loss. And we'll talk about lifestyle choices that could support better thyroid function and protect your bones. So stick with me because by the end of this, you'll have a practical set of tools to make informed decisions about your thyroid health and how to safeguard your bones. Hi. I'm Sarah and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I'm also a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. And I'm also a bone fit certified fitness instructor. I'm on a mission to reduce the number of fractures that happen every year. And I am glad to have you join me in the journey to better bone health. So let's talk about the medication that's the second most prescribed medication for older adults. That medication is levothyroxine with the brand name of Synthroid. This medication is used to treat thyroid dysfunction, specifically hypothyroidism. When a person has hypothyroidism, the thyroid gland does not produce enough thyroid hormones to meet that person's needs. The hormones that are in short supply are thyroxin, generally known as T4, and triodiothyronine, hopefully I said that right, generally known as T3. T4 and T3 help to regulate metabolism and energy function. Hypothyroidism can potentially become a serious medical problem if it's left untreated. It can lead to higher levels of bad cholesterol because of slower metabolism and increased risk of heart disease. Hypothyroidism can also cause brain fog or more serious memory problems. It can lead to having significant weight gain and to severe fatigue. It can also cause visible neck swelling and in severe cases, it can create difficulty swallowing and even breathing. For people who have hypothyroidism, levothyroxine helps treat this condition and it improves their quality of life. All of that makes this medication seem like a really good thing. The trouble happens when a person gets too much levothyroxine. If medication isn't monitored, then too much levothyroxine can start alternating back and forth with hyperthyroidism, which is actually the opposite of hypothyroidism. With hyperthyroidism, the thyroid gland produces too much T4 and T3. With hyperthyroidism, bone formation is suppressed and bone breakdown increases. Additionally, more calcium is released from the bones into the bloodstream, which makes our bodies less likely to absorb calcium from the foods that we eat. None of this is a very good picture for bone health. Even when a person needs levothyroxine, research shows that levothyroxine use was associated with greater loss of total bone mass and bone density, even in participants whose TSH levels were within the normal range over a medium follow-up of 6.3 years. This study included 81 levothyroxine users, including 32 men and 49 women using levothyroxine and 364 non-levothyroxine users that included 148 men and 216 women. The average age for all of the participants in the study was 73. Levothyroxine can be a life-saving medication depending on the circumstances, but it's also frequently over-prescribed, which potentially causes harm and unnecessary bone loss. According to Dr. Elena Gottby, hopefully I said her name right, who's the lead author and a postdoctoral research fellow at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine for the recent research that has just been published about levothyroxine and bone health. She said, 
data indicates that a significant proportion of thyroid hormone prescriptions may be given to older adults without hypothyroidism, raising concerns about subsequent relative excess of thyroid hormone. So how do you know if you really have hypothyroidism and if you need levothyroxine or Synthroid? First, it's important to make sure that your doctor does comprehensive testing to assess your thyroid function based on your lab work and not just your symptoms. Second, ask your doctor to periodically check and reassess your thyroid function to make sure that you have a continued need for medication. This is an issue because when someone starts taking levothyroxine, they're often left on it as a medication indefinitely for the rest of their life, but that might not actually be necessary. Researchers found that some people have been taking levothyroxine for years, but it's unclear why the medication was initially prescribed or if it's still needed. So get some current lab work and get things checked out. Third, there are lifestyle interventions that may be able to help, and it's worth experimenting with a holistic approach before committing to levothyroxine. Jennifer Mammon, who's a medical doctor and a PhD, who works as an associate professor of endocrinology at John Hopkins, who co-authored the recent research, advises adults taking levothyroxine or Synthroid that they should have their doctor perform a risk-benefit assessment, weighing the strengths of the indications for treatment against the potential adverse effects of levothyroxine. So what are the lifestyle choices that should be tried out before taking levothyroxine or potentially alongside it? First, it's important to consider nutrition. Thyroid function is heavily dependent on getting certain nutrients. Iodine is actually essential for thyroid production, and iodine deficiency can cause hypothyroidism. Iodine can be found in seaweed, fish, dairy, eggs, and salt that's had iodine added to it. It's important to note that salt does not naturally have iodine in it. If you use unrefined salt that has other trace nutrients that are generally a good thing, know that it doesn't have iodine in it, so you need to get iodine from an alternative source. If you have hypothyroidism, have your iodine level checked. Iodine is not something that we generally supplement with, but if you have a deficiency, and that deficiency could be the cause of hypothyroidism, then you might wanna start supplementing iodine. This is something that you wanna work with your doctor on. So if you're concerned about it, get your iodine level checked. Selenium helps to convert T4 into T3, which is the active form. Selenium is found in Brazil nuts, whole grains, fish, and eggs. Zinc helps to regulate TSH production, and it's found in meat, shellfish, nuts, and seeds. Iron is also essential for proper thyroid function, and it's found in red meats, beans, and some fortified cereals. Having low levels of vitamin D is also linked to having thyroid dysfunction, and it can be found in fatty fish like salmon, fortified foods, and sunlight. B vitamins, especially B12, help to support energy metabolism and healthy thyroid function. B vitamins are found in a variety of foods, including meat, dairy, eggs, and fortified plant-based foods. Exercise can also help to balance thyroid function. Both aerobic and strength training can contribute to healthy thyroid function. It's important not to overtrain because that could actually have the opposite effect on your thyroid. Manage your stress level. Chronic stress can lead to suppression of your thyroid hormone production. You might try out yoga, meditation, or breath work to reduce your stress level. It's also important to get enough sleep and to get quality sleep that supports hormone regulation. It's important to get between seven and eight hours of sleep as often as possible. I think it's really interesting how these lifestyle choices all contribute to better bone health while also supporting better thyroid function. Getting the right nutrients into our bodies, exercising regularly, reducing stress, and getting good sleep all contribute to better bone health long term. I think the big takeaway here is that when we work on improving health in one area of our lives, it ripples out and makes a positive difference in many areas of our life. It's amazing how connected everything in our bodies is, isn't it? 
that's a good thing. Lifestyle choices can make a real difference in people's health and overall well-being. They may not be able to completely eliminate all needs for medication, but it can sure reduce the need for many medications, and it can also improve health alongside medication. Levothyroxine or Synthroid may be necessary for quite a number of people, but it's important to monitor its use with regular lab work from a doctor and to leverage the benefits of lifestyle choices for better thyroid function and bone health at the same time. If you found this video helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. There are several resources that are available for you to go over in the description for this video, and I encourage you to check them out for yourself. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I look forward to talking with you soon.